Back in the spring of 2004, I showed up to my training to be a Shanti volunteer, and I had no idea what I was in for. I thought I was just going to be told what to do to try to be of some help to a Shanti client. Rather, I was given a glimpse into what it feels like to come together with another human being as equals who share a common humanity. I fell in love with this organization during that training because what that training was really about was how we could live by our highest values, how we could, in the words of Lincoln, be the better angels of our nature. And being lucky enough to have had Shanti play a significant role in my life for over 13 plus years now. I want you to know that I believe with all my heart what I'm about to say to you now. The way Shanti asks us to be in the world is exactly what our world needs right now. For more than 43 years, all of our services have been grounded in one unshakable belief. Every single person deserves, is worthy of compassion, social connection, and human dignity, period. At times, our core value has simply been an intuitive expression of our morals. It's just the right thing to do. In more recent years, the research in the scientific and medical communities have shown how much better patients do when they receive compassion, connection, and dignity. So then, our founding principle can also be seen as an expression of certain public health best practices. And today, without any intention or desire to do so, we find our Shanti model of service also being a form of political expression. You see, every day, Shanti staff and volunteers, in the words of our founder, Charlie Garfield, show up, pay attention, and they care. We show up, we pay attention, and we care for vulnerable women, members of the LGBTQ community, people of color, immigrants, including the undocumented. <laughs> Basically offering a view of how to be in the world, which is completely antithetical to what we see and hear from the current presidential administration. So here, we are shown in very stark terms two different paths in how we can be with one another. The first appeals to our fears, and as we were reminded in November, it is very effective because immediately evolutionary impulses evolutionary ingrained impulses kick in. And we start to divide ourselves into groups, letting some people in, keeping some people out, making sure we are aligned with those who we think are like us, usually because they look or sound like we do. And while people may be very nurturing of one another within the group, we know all too well they can be extremely hostile to anyone outside of the group. 
I would suggest that this is exactly some of what we are living through in our country right now. Thankfully, there is a second path. This path forges ahead based on all that we have in common, which is always so much greater than any of our differences. And though it does not get nearly as much attention as some of our other evolutionary traits, we cannot forget it is just as much a part of who we are and how we got here. In northern Spain, there is an area that archaeologists call the Pit of Bones. This is where the oldest human DNA was found. It was discovered in 1983, and over 6,000 human bones have been dug up in this area, including 30 full skeletal remains. But there are two skeletal remains in particular that have captured the interest and excitement of academics. One tells the story of a teenage girl who lived to be about 12 or 14, and the other of an older man who died in his mid to late 40s. Based on the remains, scientists determined that both had such serious health issues and physical disabilities that the only way either of them survived for as long as they did was because of the care they received from others in their community. Some academics call this the oldest evidence of human compassion. It is half a million years old. This is who we are. No matter what it might feel like, no matter what we are told in the news, our best authentic selves open our arms and our hearts to each other, especially when we see one another in need. It is what theologians and philosophers from every culture in every point of our history have gestured at and tried to remind us of. And it is what Martin Luther King Jr. so beautifully and simply put as the beloved community, where there is, quote, an understanding, redeeming goodwill for everyone, and an overflowing love that does not discriminate between worthy and unworthy people. I certainly did not know it back then, but when I look back at my volunteer training now, this is why I knew I had to be a part of Shanti. Shanti showed me that there is a way to create beloved community and to do so for folks who may never get the opportunity from anywhere else in their lives. Whether we are conscious of it or not, every day, each one of us are presented with these two paths I've mentioned tonight. The one of fear and differences, or the one that MLK referred to as beloved community. We are seeing what happens when we veer too far down the path of differences and groups. The question is, what are we going to do now? If you believe that the path of compassion, connection, and human dignity can be the most powerful gift you can give to one another, I hope you will stand with us, for this is the mission of Shanti. It has been for four and a half decades, and it needs to be now more than ever. I hope you will join us. Thank you very much for being here. It's great to see all of you tonight. Thank you.